Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope everyone is doing well. So you now have that brand new Proxmox server installed into your home lab data center. Now you actually want to start running enterprise workloads on top of that Proxmox server. Well, if you're like me and you come from the world of other hypervisors, maybe VMware, Hyper-V, and others, what about installing the drivers that it requires to correctly recognize the hard disk during the installation process? What about networking? What about the application installation that allows Windows Server 2022 to correctly interoperate with Proxmox and the available drivers and integrations there? Well, stick around. We're going to talk all things Proxmox and Windows Server installations, specifically Windows Server 2022. We're going to talk about installing, configuring drivers and applications. So let's dive right in. Before we begin with the installation of Windows Server 2022, there are two ISOs that we need to have readily available as well as uploaded to our Proxmox server ISO storage. Those ISO files are Windows Server 2022 itself, the ISO installation file for Windows Server 2022, as well as something known as the Vert IO drivers. If you come from the VMware world, this is similar to the VMware tools package that provides all of the drivers and applications necessary to run operating systems on top of the hypervisor. Those Vert IO drivers are freely available and easily found directly from the Proxmox webpage. If you actually just Google Vert IO and Proxmox, you will most likely land on the page that you see here. If you scroll down towards the middle of the page, you will see the using the ISO under installation and it's hyperlinked to download the latest stable version. And that's what I have done. I simply click the link, downloaded the ISO image for the Vert IO drivers. Now that we have the Vert IO ISO downloaded, along with the Windows Server 2022 ISO, I have uploaded both of those ISO images to my local Proxmox ISO storage that I've created. And you will see that I have both the Windows Server 2022 August ISO downloaded as well as the Vert IO Windows ISO image. Now that we have both of those ISO images, we are in a good position to start creating our Windows Server 2022 virtual machine, and we have the driver installations needed to present the hard drive correctly in Proxmox with Windows Server 2022. Now that we've confirmed our ISO images and they are correctly uploaded to our Proxmox server, we can now begin the creation of the Windows Server 2022 virtual machine. So I'm going to right click on my Proxmox server, click Create VM, and we're going to name this Windows Server 2022. On the OS screen, we're going to select the ISO image that will be used for the installation. Here, we're going to choose Windows Server 2022 ISO image and I'm gonna select that here. On the disk screen, we're simply going to leave this selected at the defaults. If you know, the SCSI controller is selected for Vert IO SCSI, and this is the reason we're going to need the Vert IO ISO to pull the drivers from during the Windows Server 2022 installation. On the disk screen, I'm going to leave this selected for SCSI, and I'm going to select my storage where I want to store this Windows Server 2022 virtual machine. I want to select the disk size, which is 32 gigs. Here, I'm going to leave this at one socket and change this to four cores. Memory, I'm going to select four gigs. On the network, I'm going to leave this selected for the default Linux bridge that is created. And we're going to talk about networking in just a bit. So we're going to leave this the defaults for now. Now we simply confirm the configuration parameters for creating this Windows Server 2022 virtual machine in Proxmox. Now that we have the Windows Server 2022 virtual machine created in Proxmox, we're going to navigate to our hardware for Windows Server 2022. And as you remember, we added the ISO image for the CD-ROM as part of the creation of the virtual machine. That's important as that will allow us to install the guest operating system. However, we want to add another CD-ROM drive and for this CD-ROM drive, we're actually going to select the Vert IO drivers. 
So I'm going to select the ISO image storage location, and I'm going to select the Vert IO Windows ISO, and I'm going to click Add. This will allow us during the installation to have the secondary CD-ROM drive mounted with the Vert IO drivers so that we can easily pull the drivers needed to correctly identify the hard disk. We have started our Windows Server 2022 virtual machine, and as you can see, it's correctly booting from the Windows Server 2022 ISO image, which is expected. So this is the similar process as you would see if you literally put a CD-ROM drive into a physical server. The same goes with a virtual machine. It is reading from that ISO image and booting into the operating system installation. Now we make it through to the operating system setup. We're gonna click Next. I'm going to click install now. I'm going to click I don't have a product key and we're going to select Windows Server 2022 standard desktop experience. Click the I accept checkbox, click next, custom installation. And here we see that Windows has not detected any hard disk. This is why we needed the Vert IO drivers. At this point, we can click the load driver installation, click browse, and we're going to select our Vert IO ISO image that is mounted as a virtual CD-ROM device. We're going to scroll down to VIO SCSI, and we're going to select 2K22 AMD 64. And after we click OK, we now see the Red Hat Vert IO SCSI pass-through controller and it's pulling that driver from the virtual CD-ROM device. Now Windows understands how to load the driver needed for the installation on this virtual hard disk. The installation of Windows Server 2022 has finished successfully so now we're to the screen where we actually set the initial administrator password. We're going to use the VNC controls to initiate a control alt delete and log in as that initial administrator account. Now that we are logged in initially into our Windows Server 2022 installation, we want to now install that Vert IO package in our Windows Server 2022 installation. It allows Windows to have all of the recent drivers and integrations needed to correctly interoperate with Proxmox. We still have our ISO mounted as a secondary CD-ROM device. I'm going to click that CD-ROM and I'm going to click the Vert Win GT X64 for 64 bit operating system. This installation process is basically a next, next, finish type process. So we're going to click next, set the EULA, leave the default selected here, click next, and then finally install. We can see that during the installation process, Windows has now correctly identified the network card and we see the indication that we have network connectivity. At this point, we can click the finish button. And it's a good idea to reboot your Windows Server 2022 installation. Now that we have the Vert IO drivers correctly installed and we've rebooted our Windows Server 2022 virtual machine, I have logged in as the administrator. Let's talk about networking. As you can see, I'm pulling a 192.168.1.237 IP address. It's a particular VLAN that I have running in my home lab network. What if I want this Windows Server 2022 virtual machine to be in a separate VLAN? How do we do that with Proxmox? To add VLAN functionality in Proxmox, we need to take a look at our default Linux bridge. In the default Linux bridge, we edit the settings of our bridge and there is a special checkbox called VLAN Aware. When we select that checkbox for VLAN Aware, Proxmox adds VLAN tagging capabilities to that default Linux bridge, and it allows Proxmox at that point to understand VLAN tagging with that default Linux bridge. This also translates to our virtual machines. Any virtual machines that are created and attached to that default Linux bridge, we can assign a VLAN tag and have that virtual machine correctly provisioned in a separate VLAN. If we navigate to the hardware settings of our Windows Server 2022 virtual machine and take a look at our network device, let's edit that network device. When we edit the network device, we can see that we are attached to that default Linux bridge. If we want this virtual machine to be provisioned in a separate VLAN or a different VLAN than the default VLAN that is untagged in our home lab network, we can add that VLAN tag here. I'm going to add the VLAN tag 333 and click OK. Now that we have added that default VLAN tag, let's reboot our Windows Server host.
We have now rebooted our Windows Server 2022 server, and now let's check the IP address since we added the VLAN tag. As you can see now that we've added the 333 VLAN tag, we now have a totally different IP address, telling us that Proxmox has now correctly assigned this virtual machine in the 333 VLAN, and we now get the DHCP assigned address coming from that particular VLAN. Now, what if we want to create a virtual machine template out of this newly installed Windows Server 2022 virtual machine? Well, there are a couple of steps that we want to accomplish that in a best practice way. One is actually sysprepping the machine for converting to a template. The sysprep process involves generalizing the Windows Server 2022 operating system and really prior versions of Windows Server and Windows Client operating systems in such a way that they can be safely cloned so that when new virtual machines are provisioned from that template or from an image, they each have the individuality that they need to operate and function correctly on a Windows domain network. Now, that is just a fancy way to say that this is Microsoft's recommendation to avoid potential problems by using a image process to deploy new virtual machines that are Windows based. To accomplish the sysprep process, it's a simple command with a few parameters. I have copied this into the clipboard in my virtual machine, but basically the sysprep command is found in the system32 directory sysprep folder sysprep.exe and we're going to pass in the slash OOBE for out of box experience generalized to ensure that this Windows Server 2022 virtual machine receives a new security identifier and we're telling sysprep to after finishing the process we want it to shut down this virtual machine once this virtual machine is correctly shut down we can then convert this installation to a template any new virtual machines that are cloned from this template will assume all of the benefits of the sysprep operation and we can safely provision those new windows server 2022 virtual machines machines. Now, our Windows Server 2022 virtual machine has correctly shut down from the sysprep process. Now, all we have left to do is right-click on the Windows Server 2022 virtual machine and select Convert to Template. And we have to confirm the operation of converting this VM to a template. So guys, what do you think? As easy as that, we have built up a new Windows Server 2022 installation in a Proxmox virtual machine. We have installed the necessary Vert IO drivers to allow Windows Server 2022 to interoperate with Proxmox correctly. We have looked at assigning different VLANs to our Proxmox virtual machines. And we have looked at running the sysprep utility to correctly generalize the Windows Server 2022 operating system so that we could then convert Windows Server 2022 to a virtual machine template in Proxmox. It's really awesome to use some of these features and functionalities, both of Windows Server as well as of Proxmox, to automate and streamline the process of provisioning new virtual machines. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.